Hello, and welcome to this film, which is all about um, alcohols, and it's the first in a series of films about all the functional groups that we're going to come across in the Year 12 course. So we're going to start off by looking at alcohols, as I say, and hopefully by the end of this film, you're going to know what the functional group looks like, you'll be able to name alcohols with up to eight carbons in, and straight chains, and also you'll be able to understand why there's different kinds of alcohols, You'll be able to look at the structure of alcohols and use it to explain their physical properties. And you'll also know the names of some reactions that alcohols take part in. We're not going to look at these reactions in detail. With all these films, we're just going to name them. And then the next series of films is going to look at these reactions in a bit more depth. So let's start off by looking at what a functional group that we call an alcohol looks like. Okay, The formula of an alcohol will always end in OH, and that's because... Any alcohol will have an oxygen attached to a carbon and a hydrogen. Okay, So anytime you've got this OH group in a molecule, you're going to have an alcohol. Okay, And your formula is going to end in OH. And if you don't specify what the carbon chain is, you call it some unspecified thing. So we'd call it an R group. So this is where we're not saying what's attached here, but we're just saying in general, you've got an OH attached to some unspecified chain you've got an alcohol. Okay, naming alcohols is quite simple if you know how to name alkanes because you use exactly the same prefixes and if we have a look at this alcohol here with one carbon then it's going to start off like the alkane with one carbon so that is methane okay but instead of being methane it's going to end in ol okay because it's an alcohol okay so methanol. Here are two alcohols both with four carbons and notice here that it matters where you put the alcohol group, okay? So they're both, they're both going to be called butanol, okay? But because this alcohol has the alcohol group on the first carbon, it's called butan-1-ol. You could also call it 1-butanol, but it's preferred to use this system, okay? This one has the alcohol group on the 1, 2, second carbon. You could also say it's the third one, but you're going to use the smallest number you can. So this is butan 2 ol And likewise, you could call that 2-butanol, but they prefer you to use butan 2 ol Okay. Here's some different kinds of alcohol. Now, obviously, you can have lots of different alcohols with lots of different names. Here are uh, three alcohols, all with four carbons. And not only are they isomers of each other, but they're actually different kinds of alcohol because they've got different numbers of carbons directly attached to the alcohol carbon. Now, if we look at this first one, this is a primary alcohol because here's our alcohol carbon. It's only got one carbon attached to it directly. Okay? You could say it's got three carbons attached to it, but it's only got one attached to it directly. Okay, so one or no carbons attached to my alcohol okay, means I've got a primary alcohol. This alcohol group here, so here's my alcohol carbon, okay, has got two carbons directly attached to it, so it's called secondary. This one here is my alcohol carbon, okay, has got one, two, three carbons directly attached to it, so it's called tertiary. And these are these things are really important because Different types of alcohol react in different ways, but we'll come to those reactions later, as I said. Now, physical properties. Physical properties of alcohols can easily be explained if you remember that you've got a highly electronegative atom here, oxygen, attached to a hydrogen. So there's a very polar bond here. There's a lone pair on the oxygen, so alcohols can form hydrogen bonds with themselves. Okay, which means that if I compared the boiling point of an alcohol with that of an alkane of similar molecular weight, so therefore similar dispersion forces, I'd expect the alcohol to, alcohol to have a much higher boiling point because of its ability to hydrogen bond. When it comes to solubility in water, well, remember that water can hydrogen bond with things. So if my alcohol can form hydrogen bonds with water, then we're going to release quite a lot of energy by putting the alcohol in water, and it's going to be likely to be soluble. Got to be a little bit careful here because you've got this nonpolar part of the molecule, and when nonpolar things dissolve in water, they don't form very strong forces of attraction. So nonpolar things tend to be insoluble in water. 
So the longer this carbon chain becomes, the less soluble your alcohol will be. Okay, you don't have to predict where the cutoff is going to be, but you just have to know that the longer this chain is, the less soluble the alcohol becomes in water. That it's soluble in water because of its ability to hydrogen bond. Eventually, they'll become insoluble because this nonpolar part overcomes this hydrogen bonding effect. Okay, now we're just going to very quickly look at what kinds of reactions alcohols take part in. They can be oxidized. You can turn them into aldehydes, ketones, and carboxylic acids. This won't really mean very much until we cover those other functional groups, but it's just worth remembering that alcohols can be oxidized. And you can make esters out of them in things called esterification reactions. And there you're going to need to react your alcohol with a carboxylic acid. But and, as I say, until you come across these functional groups, these things won't mean very much. So this is just to outline the reactions that they take part in for now. OK, as for making alcohols, well, you could reduce aldehydes and ketones, but that's not actually a method that is covered on the course. And you can hydrolyze or break down esters. So just like you can use an alcohol to make an ester, if you break an ester up, you're going to make an alcohol. And this one is on the course, and we'll need to look at that in more depth later on. Okay, so the idea at the start of this film was to know what an alcohol looked like and how to name them and different types of alcohols and to be able to explain their physical properties and just to know the names of reactions that they take part in. If there's any questions that come up from this film, please feel free to come and see me or if you'd like to post a comment on the YouTube film, that would be really helpful because then other people can see the answer to your question.